thank you so much for that introduction and having me on this um, platform. I think it's so important that we have these platforms to share our knowledge, our stories, our experience to, to support others in their journeys for personal growth. And Rania did um, go over this a little bit, but I just want to re revisit what is a growth mindset. Um, basically, as she said, it's the um, acceptance that talent, knowledge, skills can be developed, that they're not innate, that you're born with them and you either have them or you don't. And what are some behaviors that go along with a growth mindset? Um, sharing info. Uh, developing new skills, learning, constant learning, continuous learning, uh, collaboration, innovative and creative thinking, uh, embracing challenges, and being willing to take feedback. So those are part of what are needed for personal growth also. And in general, what I work with is there's the, are developing leadership skills. Um, there is a new paradigm of leadership. It's not just a title anymore. It's not the old curmudgeon Scrooge sitting in his office yelling orders and expecting everybody to jump and do what he, he says. And it, I say he because it used to be mostly he's. Um, but it's the ability to inspire um, and influence others to achieve a common goal. And that is really what is looked at now as leaders, even in such... Um, corporate uh, works as the Harvard Business Review and others and Forbes, they talk about this new paradigm of leadership. And part of leadership is, um, well, where I go with leadership when it comes to women is that I think women are a bit disadvantaged when it comes to achieving leadership. And that is changing. But and I'm trying to create a movement to change that, but it is it is still a reality in that 51 percent of the population are women, yet only about a third of the leadership positions globally are held by women. And in the Fortune 500 CEOs, only 10 percent are women. So we're still lagging in obtaining those leadership roles. And I think part of this disadvantage is just some of our social conditioning. Just as I throw in stats every once in a while because that's where my brain goes, but you know, $1,002 billion globally is spent on women's fashion. That's for actually a trillion. So, but for men, only 465 billion, which is a big difference, almost you know, a, thir uh, a third of what is spent. And the fact, the beauty industry um, spends $7.7 .7 billion on advertising. That was in 2002. So why is this important? Because we, uh, back before even social media, there were some major studies about um, messaging and our subconscious, because our subconscious makes about 95% of our decisions. And so these constant messages, and we, back then we were, we were receiving about 3,000 messages a day. Not that our conscious was aware of, but our subconscious was. And so you see this messaging constantly talking about fashion or beauty or what you're supposed to look like or how you're supposed to act. I mean, I grew up in a generation where women were supposed to be seen and not heard. You were supposed to make everybody comfortable. You did not disagree or, you know, espouse any ideas that weren't already being suggested. And so that still to, to somewhat um, is today. I mean, look at how parents treat girls and boys. You know, a little girl falls and it's, oh, oh my, oh my dear, you know, did you hurt yourself? A little boy falls, it's like, okay, get up and go do it again, try it again, see if you can do it. Um, girls uniforms in schools. There are still schools that make girls wear, wear skirts. Well, you cannot be as active if you are wearing a skirt, just reality. Um, you can't run, jump and play if you know as much in a skirt. And so there's still that social conditioning that is going on. It's less than obviously when I grew up, but it is still there. So that is part of why I think women are disadvantaged to some extent. In my work, um, as JB said, through, through, throughout the world, 
Um, I work with women who never imagined they were going to be leaders. Often they had to step up to lead because of necessity or because of survival. Um, I work with a lot of community women and aspiring leaders. And what I have been so blessed to be part of their lives uh, is helping them understand that they have the superpowers they need to be leaders. And I think all women do. Because nowadays, what used to be called soft skills, because they were mostly feminine um, in the workplace, um, are now considered leadership skills, like empathy, team building, communications, um, adaptability. I mean, women, we all talk about how women juggle, usually juggle so many different roles and they, so they have to be adaptable. They have to be able to delegate. They have to be able to communicate. And so these things are now considered leadership skills. I think they always were, but now they're finally being recognized. So these are often traits that women have through nature, nurture, whatever you wanna call it, but that's how we have evolved and that's what we have. So I think that helps in identifying um, what I assist women in doing is identifying what are their skills? What do they have? What parts of them do they already exhibit given these skill sets? And then how can we develop them so that they can use them more effectively and more strategically? Um, one woman I worked with uh, in, in Kenya, she really started doing farming because Oftentimes in smaller communities, the men go work in larger cities to make money. They send the money home and the women really have to survive with, you know, getting food, getting water and um, supporting the family. So she started doing some farming in her own little plot. Well, then she got other women involved because they all saw her having more food and producing more and they created a little cooperative where they all started growing things, but they grew maybe some different things or some, you know, to supplement their, their diets. And that cooperative has now grown to, to about 10,000 women because not only did they do it in their community, they started doing it, they, it caught on and other people wanted, to, other women wanted to learn how to do it. And so that's one of these behaviors that is a growth mindset. It is sharing info, peer learning, sharing what you know, collaborating, partnerships. So that, once again, is one of the newer leadership paradigms. And um, so I think it's, Im it's important that we recognize these things and I help women recognize these things. Oftentimes we don't recognize it in ourselves. We just think, oh, we're doing this and it's doing okay and well, we'll do it. So. Some of the strategies that I use or have women go through um, to actually identify their, their superpowers or their skill sets is, as Rania said, you have to do some self-reflection. Um, part of the self-reflection is figuring out what is your passion? What really moves you? What do you get excited about? What change do you see that, you, what do you wanna change? What's something you wanna change? Because you can lead that change. Um, rather than sit back and let somebody else take the lead. Um, having that positive mindset, being willing to learn. Women tend to really be continuous learners because of all their different uh, roles that they have to play. If you've ever been a mother, you know that keeping up with your kids, even in school, you have to pretty much continuously learn. And when they are in one phase, all of a sudden they jump to another phase, you gotta figure it out pretty quickly. And the same in the workplace, women are often tasked with a lot of different things that aren't necessarily in their job description and pretty quickly they have to learn. So the continuous learning is also something that I encourage the women to do. But the self-reflection to see what it is you're passionate about it. And as uh, Rania said, to also identify where are your strengths, where are your potential weaknesses. And sometimes you can work on those weaknesses. Sometimes you find people to, to be part of your team that have those strengths where you are not as strong. So networking, women tend to be very good at networking. Um, 
we also are very good at empowering others. Uh, that's just how we we have uh, evolved into, you know, bringing other people along and helping them learn and teaching this woman in 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 um, Africa. Obviously, she empowered others, and she became a leader. She is actually now considered an expert in localized farming and women's women's cooperatives, and speaks at the UN all the time. I mean, she is called on and her way is paid. So she can be on that global stage to get her in that decision-making space because she really honed in on some of her leadership skills. Adaptability. We have to be adaptive. We have to be able to adapt to um, all different situations. The world is changing so fast now. There are internal changes and external changes. By internal, sometimes within your family, within yourself, your cir circumstance changes and you have to adapt. And then there's the external changes. I mean, this morning I was trying to figure out how to put this background on my computer. That was an external change and I had to learn it pretty quick. And I was, it, JB was very good at helping me because it was something I ha I've never used this platform. And then also um, practicing empathy, you know, on ourselves, being kind to ourselves and being kind to others and being considerate and understanding that everybody comes from a different place and has different lived experiences that make them who they are and how they think and how they react. So we have to take that into consideration. The other thing I talk to these women about are, you are an expert in your lived experiences. You have had experiences that have prepared you for for whatever you're confronting, and you are your expert, and your your um, voice is important. It's important to share it and not keep it to yourself because it it adds to the collective knowledge. And decisions are bet made much better when there are diverse perspective perspectives and there is a collective thinking. Um, and then lastly, and I think Rania also touched on this, um, accepting or acknowledging failure. And um, that we, I think we all learn more when, um, when we're um, from, from adversity than we actually do from what happened, the, the good things that happen. Because in adversity, you really stop and think and review and look at what has happened what happened? What did what part did I play in that? Where where did where did things go wrong? Where did things go right? And um, I use a quote that I had written down, and now I can't find it. But Michael Jordan has a very effective quote that I'll paraphrase: that he has missed over nine thousand shots in his career, that um, he lost three hundred games. He was about 26 times, I think it was, was de depended on to make the winning shot for to win the game. And over and over and over again, he failed. And yet it was those failures that taught him how to succeed and how to be successful. So it is very important that we give ourselves grace and mm -hmm. understand that failure is not actually stepping back. It's the opportunity to learn and move forward. So that's what I work in. And um, I do want to just show this book so, um, because this, there are often, this group um, put together a book of, with 300, excuse me, 262 women who are entrepreneurs, creatives, entrepreneurs, because it was self-funded. All of us were involved in the production and are featured in this book. And I also happen to write the forward, but it's giving platforms to women to share their voices. And that is what I think we all need to do more often because you know, so long in history, anonymous meant a woman, whether it was an author, a speaker or whatever. And we don't wanna be anonymous anymore. We wanna be heard because we have good ideas. Our ideas are important and the perspective is important and that's how we create change. So I support women to lead the change they wanna see and become change agents. So thank you very much for having me here and thank you very much for all of you that are attending and listening to this on, on a replay, um, go out there and change, the, lead the change you wanna see. So thank you.